Okay, so in the last video, I told you how me and my friends were having a competition on how to lose as much body fat as possible over 10 weeks. <clears throat> and I also challenged any of you to go and try to do the same because it's really healthy to lose body fat, right? And obviously everyone's gonna look better if they have less body fat. It's been 10 days since the last video and uh, this is the changes for me. Okay, so this is a front view and uh, on the left is before and then on the right is after. So uh, you can see there's a slight change in body composition. And then this is the back view as well. So you can see that basically my love handles are a bit smaller and there's a bit more definition in the back. <clears throat> and uh, if you look at the uh, body fat percentage change, I went from 21.5% uh, down to 20.4% and my body weight had dropped three kilos. And just to be transparent, in the previous video, I said my starting body fat percentage was 20.1, but I, th I thought that reading was actually off. So I went and did another reading on the same day to get an accurate reading, okay? So the first reading was not accurate, okay? So I started with 21.5% body fat, and uh, after 10 days, I have 20.4% body fat. So I lost just over a percent. And then I also lost three kgs or 6.6 .6 pounds of body weight. Um, and uh, the thing is, over the last 10 days, I deliberately tried to run my body fat uh, loss experiment or, or the challenge with zero caloric deficit, okay? I ate 3,640 calories uh, during my weight loss on training days and on rest days I ate 3,100 calories and that would pretty much match my caloric output during this period and I deliberately did that because uh, if you uh, look at this guy Eddie Hall okay he's a very uh, famous strongman competitor when he went on the carnival diet which is what I'm the diet that I'm eating he was eating 10,000 calories a day which was a caloric surplus for him and he was still losing body weight and he couldn't even figure it out himself okay um, and a lot of people who go on the carnival diet initially they report very rapid weight loss even though they seem to be eating around the same amount of calories as they were before okay and now why is that now to answer that question, I have to ask you this question, okay? When you lose weight, if you go on a diet or you, you, know, you cut your calories or whatever you, method you use, where does the weight go? Now a research called uh, Ruben Meerman uh, did this paper about 10 years ago. It's actually an old paper. And the paper title was, when somebody loses weight, where does the fat go, okay? And uh, that's the question I want to pose to you. Do you know where the weight actually goes? <clears throat> and the interesting thing is, in the paper, uh, Meerman uh, asked 50 doctors, 50 uh, dietitians, and 50 personal trainers, okay, when somebody loses weight, where, is this the, where does it go? And uh, most of them said heat. Some of them said other uh, sources and uh, a lot of people also thought it was from feces or sweat. Um, but only two of the dietitians got it right, which is when you lose weight, you breathe it out via carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, that is what carbohydrates and fats are made from. Okay, from the atoms, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, which then make up various molecules that uh, make up carbohydrates and uh, fatty acids or fats. And out of the 150 people he um, interviewed, doctors, dietitians who should know their field and uh, personal trainers, only two out of 150 got it right, okay? Because see, the, the problem is, all right, a lot of people don't know this, is that calories are a measurement of heat and they are measured in what is called a bomb calorie meter, okay? So they put the food in the bomb calorie meter and they burn it and they heat up the water and then they measure the temperature change 
to measure how much energy is stored in the um, in the food but that is what is called a closed system okay a closed system you're only getting transfer of energy from the system to the outside but the body is not a closed system the body is what's called an open system which is a transfer of not only energy but also mass okay and uh, so you can actually google this right you can google what is the difference between an open and closed system and Google AI will tell you basically the difference is that a closed system is just a transfer of energy while an open system is a transfer of energy and mass and that was what a human body is it is an open system not a closed system which is what a lot of people seem to think it is and they keep quoting the first law of thermodynamics saying basically calorie in has to equal calorie out so you have to expend the same amount of energy that you put in in order to lose weight but that's not true because it's not taking into account mass okay so a lot of people know that one gram of fat is nine calories all right and one gram of carbohydrates is four calories but if you do the reverse okay let's say you were counting calories and you wanted to eat or input 900 calories well that would be 100 calories of fat but it would be 225 calories of carbohydrates okay and we're not talking about and i'm not talking about the amount of food you eat i'm talking about the the actual uh, macronutrient which is absorbed by the body all right there's a big difference in weight so if you are counting calories in terms of fat you are actually ingesting a much smaller amount of mass uh, in terms of fat than you would if you were uh, ingesting carbohydrates and that goes to explain a lot uh, uh, a big part into explaining why Eddie Hall was uh, running a caloric surplus compared to his previous diet and was still losing weight okay now the diet I was previously eating when I was on holiday and during my wedding and uh, over the two months leading up to my body fat loss experiment I was eating 30% uh, uh, protein 20% uh, fat and around 50% carbohydrates okay so I was eating around 1800 calories of carbohydrates okay and then that would uh, equate to about 450 grams of uh, carbohydrates but it would only be 200 grams of fat so the difference in mass is actually 250 grams a day which pretty much explains why when people go on a very low uh, carbohydrate diet if they suddenly switch from uh, uh, a, basically a normal split diet of the three macronutrients then they will suddenly see a very uh, big change in their body weight and so if you uh, try to take into uh, guess um, Eddie Hall's previous um, macronutrient mix if it was 50% carbohydrates and he was eating 5,000 calories in terms of his carbohydrate intake then he was uh, putting in 1250 calories of carbohydrates but as soon as he, as he switched to fats then he was uh, burning a lot less basically uh, what would it be just just over 500 grams of fat so there will be like over 700 grams difference in the amount of macronutrient his body was ingesting a day and that explains why he was even running a caloric surplus in terms of energy but losing weight in terms of mass and a lot of people don't know this out of the 150 uh, people who were interviewed none of the doctors got it right none of the diet uh, none of the personal trainers got it right and only two of the dietitians got it right okay and why is that that is because companies like coca-cola fund a huge amount of the nutrition research um, in the nutrition space to crowd out basically the research done by uh, independently funded researchers okay so coca-cola in 2023 had 11 times more budget 
uh, for research and development than the National Institute of Health, which is the US government uh, body responsible for research uh, linked to the human body and health related research. Okay, so just one big processed food company funds 11 times more research than the US government. And you can bet their research is all geared towards helping them boost their own sales. And it is very important for a company like Coca-Cola to be able to say that one can of Coke, which has 140 calories, is the same as eating two eggs, okay, which has about the same amount of calories. And to say, well, if you eat a mixed diet, you can still drink our product, you can still drink your Coke, and you will not gain weight. But I can tell you, if you drink like multiple cans of Coke, like three cans, then uh, your body composition will be very, very different from if you ate six eggs a day, all right? And that's just one big processed food company. And if you look at all the biggest food companies in the world, uh, in terms of the American market, they control 70% of the uh, food products in the US market. So just one company funds 11 times more research than the US government Think what happens when uh, all the biggest companies in the world start funding uh, nutrition research. Plus, they have access to media companies because they advertise so much. So uh, when it comes to uh, you know, uh, presenting information and research, okay, uh, the health channels on media companies will always present the research done by these big companies. Uh, processed food companies or by pharmaceutical companies it will very rarely have never uh, be presenting information from independently funded research especially if it contradicts what the research from the big processed food companies are uh, funding so basically the researchers for the processed food companies are not testing whether a hypothesis is true or not if they have come up with an idea the processed food companies go to uh, the researchers and then they specifically design a study, okay, to try and prove a hypothesis and then they interpret the results in a specific way to try and prove a hypothesis. And uh, in terms of calorie in and calorie out, it's very important for companies like Coca-Cola to push that uh, type of um, uh, understanding amongst the general public rather than the general public understanding that weight gain and weight loss is actually a combination of mass in and energy in and then mass out and energy out or else it would affect their product sales. Okay, so what does this mean to you in terms of your fat loss uh, journey if you decide to go on this uh, fat, uh, body fat loss competition, all right? basically eat a lot more fat in your diet. And that's why I'm eating like a really high meat-based diet that's called the carnival diet because it's very high in fats, okay? And uh, fats are very, very satiating because it increases the production of the hormone GLP-1, which is the satiety hormone, which makes people feel full. So you will feel full when you eat fats, even though the calorie count is higher per gram, you will end up eating fewer calories because you will feel full and just not eat as much food in terms of mass, okay? And I know somebody will go, well, what happens if I was eating 100 grams of carbohydrates uh, or 300 grams of carbohydrates before and I switched to eating fats? What if I end up eating uh, 300 grams of fat, then obviously I'm going to be eating more calories. That is not going to happen, okay, because fat is so satiating, you will end up eating less, okay, trust me. I, when I was eating 3,640 calories uh, per day just to run exactly the same caloric output as my input, I was stuffing myself the last 10 days. It is so hard to eat 3,640 calories of meat and eggs, you will not believe. And uh, so uh, if you wanna lose weight, do not just eat a mixed diet. The bodybuilders who um, uh, do calorie counting 
when they ca cut their calories, they are not just cutting out a single macronutrient. Generally, they're, they're lowering their uh, macronutrients in the total amount of macronutrients. So just lowering the amount of calories. But because they have such a low fat content in their diets, they tend to feel really hungry. And you can go and ask any pro bodybuilder, when they cut calories, they just feel really, really hungry and they are absolutely miserable in the last few weeks of, comp of competition before they step on stage because they have to restrict their food intake so much, they feel so hungry, okay? And that is why calorie counting doesn't work for most people long-term because they're literally starving themselves in terms of how they feel and they just feel so hungry all the time that after a period of time, they give up and they go back to eating what they were eating before. But by that time, they probably have lowered their metabolic rate. So then they put all the weight back on very rapidly and then they have a yo-yo diet effect. So you won't feel that if you eat a high fat diet because you'll feel satiated all the time, okay? So that's my tip to you uh, in this video is to eat a high fat diet and also a high protein diet, okay? To maintain your muscle mass. And you can get that from eating meat and eggs, okay? You do not have to follow the carnivore diet like I am, but I would strongly advise that you eat a very high uh, protein and high fat diet while you're trying to lose weight because of this um, open system mechanism where uh, you know fat actually has less mass than uh, carbohydrates, okay? And then uh, in the next video, which I'll upload in a few days time, originally I wanted to do this video after just one week, but it took me longer to see a noticeable change in my body composition. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about how hormones affect your fat, uh, uh, fat loss and how if you put yourself in a healthy hormonal state, you will naturally lose more body fat than if you were not in a healthy hormonal state, okay? Irrespective of how many calories you put in, all right? So um, I will, going forward in the next 10 days, I will have to lo uh, lower the amount of calories I am eating, but that will be in in terms of actual meat that I am eating. So I'm gonna be cutting some of my protein and fats, but I was basically eating almost zero carbohydrates. And I'm gonna put the, um, uh, the amount of food that I was eating in the video description. I will also um, put a link to a video that Ruben Meerman basically made uh, a long time ago, which shows how he was breathing into a balloon and then um, getting the weight of the, carbo uh, of the uh, carbon into the form of carbon dioxide and water in a balloon, then freezing the balloon with liquid nitrogen to get the actual solid and the, the water that is breathed out in, in the carbon dioxide and the water, which is what the carbon and the hydrogen and the oxygen output is in terms of mass, all right? So that will be in the, the link will be in the video description. So I strongly advise you, encourage you to go on this body, body fat loss challenge. And then my recommendation to you is to eat a high meat, high eggs based diet so that uh, it'll be much easier for you to lose weight, all right? All right, next video. I uh, will be about hormones. So remember to like and subscribe to the video and I'll see you next time.